Hey guys, we are going to add, subtract, multiply, and divide some numbers in scientific notation. I'm going to give you a really quick scientific notation overview. If you want a more in-depth one, I will link a video in the corner. But basically, scientific notation is used for really, really, really big numbers or really, really, really small numbers. So for example, the 7.41 times 10 to the 9th. If I were to write that out, it would look like this, 7 billion, 410 million, yeah. Now, <laughs> how I got that was I took this decimal and moved it to the right nine times, okay? So basically scientific notation just makes it easier to work with these very large or very small numbers. Now, to add these, again, scientific notation makes this easier. To add these, I need the exponents on these tens to be the same. Multiplying and dividing is different. We'll talk about that when we get there. But for adding and subtracting them, I need these exponents to be the same, which means I just need to change one of these numbers either to make this one so it's 10 to the seventh or make this one so it's 10 to the ninth. I am going to change this one so it's 10 to the ninth. That means this guy doesn't have to change. It's going to stay 7.41 times 10 to the ninth plus this is 10 to the seventh, meaning to get to the number this is, I would move this over seven times. So if I were to move it here, I would have to move it eight times now to get to that number, right? Now, if I move it over twice, I would have to move it nine times. So I am going to move this decimal back two to give me 0 0.059. And now to get to that same number, I would need to move the decimal over nine spots. Okay. Now, if on any of these I go too fast, I will be linking videos throughout where I go more in depth on each type of these problems. Now that these are both 10 to the ninth, guess what? I can just add these two numbers and have it be 10 to the ninth. So I'm going to add these decimals. If you need a adding decimals review, I will link a video in the corner. So I'm going to do 7.41 plus 0 0.059. I'm going to stick a zero here so that lines up a little better. 0 plus 9 is 9, 5 plus 1 is 6, 4, bring down the decimal, 7. So I end up with 7.469 times 10 to the ninth. That is my answer in scientific notation. Now, if I had ended up with a number say this had been like 17 or something, I would want to adjust my numbers so there's only one number in front of the decimal for it to be truly in scientific notation form. All right, let's look at this one. Again, when I am subtracting, the exponents need to be the same. So they either need to be both 10 to the seventh or both 10 to the fifth. I'm gonna change it so they're both 10 to the seventh, which means this guy can stay just how he is, 8.94 times 10 to the seventh. This one, I want it to be 10 to the seventh. So again, to get this to the number it is, I would move it over five times. So if I want it to be seven, I'm gonna move it this way twice so that to get back to my original number, I have to move it over seven times. So that means it would be 0 0.0221 times 10 to the seventh. If that feels a little clunky, it'll probably get better as you do it more. All right, so now that these match, I can just go ahead and subtract these. So I have 8.94. When I subtract decimals, I need to line them up. So point zero two two one. I'm going to add a couple zeros there just to help me out. Subtract. Oh man, we're going to have to do a lot of borrowing. This is going to be fun. So I can't do zero minus one. I need to borrow, but I can't borrow there. So I'm going to borrow here, make this 10, but then I need to borrow again. So that becomes a nine, <laughs> 10, 10 minus one is nine, nine minus two is seven, three minus two is one, 
9 minus 0 is 9. Drop that decimal down and 8. So I end up with 8.9179 times 10 to what? The 7th. There we go. Awesome. Okay. All right. Now we're going to multiply. The cool thing about multiplying these is guess what? These don't have to match. I can just multiply them. So I am going to do 4.2 times 2.591. Now I'm assuming you can use a calculator. If that's not true, I will link a multiplying decimal video for you, but I am going to use my calculator. So 4.2 times 2.591. I get 10.8822. So 10.8822 times 10 to what power? They don't match, right? So when I multiply numbers that have exponents that have the same base, meaning these are both 10, I can just add the exponents. So 6 plus 7 gives me 13. Now, we might want to be like, sweet, we're done. But remember up here we talked about if there's not just one number in front of the decimal, it's not truly in scientific notation. So to get this there, I am going to move my decimal to the left 1, which means to get back to my number, I would have to move it one extra time, right? So it's going to change this 13 to a 14. So I'm going to have 1.08822 times 10 to the 14th power. That is a very large number that I'm glad I did not have to multiply without scientific notation. <laughs> All right, now dividing. Again, they do not have to match for division. Happy day. So I'm going to pull out my calculator and do 4.8 divided by 1.2. Oh, nope, that was 0.2. <laughs> 4.8 divided by 1.2. There we go. Which is just 4. What? That's crazy talk. So 4.8 divided by 1.2 is just 4 times 10 to what power? So similar to multiplication, if I'm dividing two numbers with exponents that have the same base, they're both 10, I'm going to subtract the exponents. So 9 minus 5 gives me 4. So this ends up being 4 times 10 to the 4th. Now there's really a decimal there, but we don't have to write it, right? So 4 times 10 to the 4th. All right, I hope this was helpful. Thanks.